He's a Rasmussen. Oh. He's Americans eating your chicken and swimming. Oh, 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 oh. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. The God. Anytime. The God. Anytime. Long's Road. Jamaica. Let's go. Y'all in the wrong world. Check out the pictures. LA, New York, MIE, the London, the Scouty Fishes. Welcome to Wall's World. in Jamaica began when I was 11 years old. My pops hired this dude, Chef Andy, to come cook at his restaurant, Cattleman Steakhouse. And immediately, the prime rib got a little more time, the beef barley soup got some more bay leaves, and you started hearing this machine gun stutter patois in the kitchen. From that, I got into reggae, dance hall, Garveyism, and Jamaica's contribution to global civil rights. And that's why I'm coming to Jamaica today, because I want to get closer to the original source of this vitality and lifestyle that's always had me in a rapture. But in a lot of ways, Jamaica has been caught up in the rapture of slavery. Even though they were emancipated in 1838 and gained independence from Britain in 1962, the country is $12 billion in debt to the rest of the world. So you have to wonder, is Jamaica actually free or is it living in a current state of neocolonialism? Prep in Kingston, Jamaica, and we're going to learn about the strength and ingenuity and pride of Jamaica and its people. And what better place to learn than elementary school? I'm going to get my Billy Madison on. Oh, you got to see this. Out of many, one people. Hello. Hello. How are you? Say hello. Hello. How All are right. you guys? <laughs> Can you just tell him your name, please? Yeah, I'm, I'm a new student. My name is Eddie. Yes. I'm from uh, New York. Hi. I like to eat soursop. So, we are Jamaicans, right? So we are going to help Eddie to understand a little bit more about our culture in Jamaica, okay? Do you know some of the people that we have produced? Some of the people that became famous? Bob Marley. Bob Marley, and what is Bob Marley famous for? Michael Jackson. Really? Oh, <laughs> what about the Jamaican bobsled team? You guys you know don't know anything about the Jamaican You never seen Cool Runnings? <laughs> As a primary school teacher in Jamaica, what is it that you try to like instill in the kids like before they move on from you? Well, good morale. <laughs> That's the first thing. We appreciate everybody, no matter the color of the skin, the class, creed, whatever. Yeah. As long as you're here, you're Jamaican. Where does that motto, out of many, one people, come from? We're a small country. We have many persons from many different countries all over the world coming together to form one. I believe that we had some very strong black people in the past who have worked and they fought very, very fervently for our freedom. There was Samuel Sharp. He was like, I would rather to die upon yonder gallows than live in slavery. And because of that determination, we are free today. There is way more to Jamaica than just the whole party and the hype life. Yeah. Smoking weed and all of that. There's a lot more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it got shaved, see? You can touch it. Yeah. Okay. You want to be on TV? Go say hi to the TV. Yo, this is Walms World, and we're in... Jamaica. Right. Dr. Nicole, yes, <laughs> nice right. to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. So we're here in Sam Sharp Square, uh -huh. right? 
And Sam Sharp follows a, a line of abolitionists from Taki to Nani of the Maroons. So growing up, being born in Jamaica, a country that was a former colony, how does it affect your identity? We were under English domination from 1655. We received our own independence in 1962. Yeah. That's hundreds of years. Yeah. And as a result, hundreds of years of what colonialism entailed is not going to disappear right away. No. There is a very real economic dimension. You have to think along the line of economic development. Most of the money that was made from sugar was exported to England. So when we're ready to develop, right, we have to borrow. But what does it mean for the lives of ordinary Jamaicans? Does it mean that we get good health care? Does it mean that we get good roads? Do we, does it mean that we get the, the money that we need to develop the rural areas? Leadership has to be invested in ways in which we can go forward using our own resources. So for people who have not come to Jamaica, they just listen to dance hall, they see the flag, they see Usain Bolt. What does the world need to understand about Jamaica? I mean, outside of tourism and there is a thriving cultural and creative industry. I mean, all it requires is a minimal input from Jamaicans for maximum output because there is that demand for Jamaican cultural goods. There really is a wisdom and understanding in the culture because this country, this land, and these people, you guys have gone to the depths that I don't think people in many other countries have gone to. I think one of the things about Jamaicans, if I were to narrow us down to one thing, I said that we're survivors. Yeah. And put us in the right circumstances, we thrive. And I think that is what is so amazing. But if you're looking from where we're coming from to where we are, it is testament to our survival. <laughs> So, we're at Lorna's, we're gonna get this Aki and Saltfish. And Aki and Saltfish is Jamaica's national dish, but it's not indigenous to Jamaica. Legend has it that it actually came over on a slave ship with a kid because he kept a black shiny seed to bring over here to remind him of home. And then that seed grew into the Aki tree and Jamaica had Aki. And it looks like a vegan egg and it comes out of the Aki flower and you take out the yellow bits here this is really a survival food. You get a lot of protein from the hockey. You boil them, you soak them, and then you stir fry them with salt fish. Everybody does it in a different way. Everyone's moms, aunts, grandmas do it different. And Lorna's is one of the most famous spots in Kingston for this breakfast dish. The quality of their salt fish is very good. It tastes like scrambled eggs and tomatoes. Here in Jamaica and the Caribbean, they do it with the salt fish. And it feels like bacalao on like Fridays at a good Puerto Rican Dominican restaurant. And what I really like is you get it here with boiled yams, boiled plantains, but the flavor is all coming from this salt fish and aki over here. Delicious. Yo, what's the legend of Mr. Chin? It's such a, basically, as the people know, it's Chinese that came down here, and we as Jamaicans want to keep things simple. So Wang, Li, Chung, Yi, whoever they are, are all Mr. Chin. That's the legend. Mr. Chin number one. Don't forget it. <laughs> Mr. Chin number one. Woo! Respect Mr. Chin. <laughs> yeah. So we're in Charleston here. There's a maroon village in Jamaica, and the maroons, they were the slaves that escaped from the plantation, led a revolution, and ran into the mountains. Hello. Hello. How's it going? It's good. I'm Eddie. I'm Marcia Douglas. Nice to meet you, Marcia. Nice meeting you, too. Welcome you. to Charleston Maroon <laughs> Asafoyard and Museum. You are in the Asafoyard, and the word Asafo means to dance. They call them maroons because they were as wild as the Cimarron boats. And so today, here in Charleston, we still live our maroon culture. Also, we do the jerk originated in the ground. I never had jerk chicken in the pit in the ground. Well, you can see the maroons had to find ways in getting food ready mm -hmm. without the British knowing exactly what is happening. Some of the spices and herbs that are generally used 
are the ones we grow around, like pepper helder. Then they would blend it with the pimento. Yeah, so in America, they call this allspice. One thing about the herbs, they work with the moon. The older the moon is, the stronger the herbs are. Oh, yes. I like that. That's good knowledge. So in the time the British take to get the smell or the smoke, the maroons would be long gone. And not only is it a good self-defense and preservation technique, but it's an incredibly intelligent cooking technique because you're cooking the chicken with indirect heat. You can cook it slow, it gets tender, it breaks down all the muscle fibers, and then when the wood gets hot, the essential oils from the wood and the aromatics on top seep into the chicken in a way that's much more effective than dried seasonings or frying it. That's right. This is extremely smart. Oh, look, look at, at this, this chicken. That's a leg. Mmm. Wow. Oh, is it? Very good. This is the best flavored jerk chicken I ever had. The spices, the aromatics. Look at the inside. Really, yeah, smoke. There's this, a red this ring is, on it. Right. This is mm -hmm. the beauty about it. Yeah. So all the fats have been burned out of it. Yeah. And it's just ready to go. Mm -hmm. And the innovation that they have here that I've never had on jerk chicken is how well they use the pepper helder. Because the pepper helder, it's like a couch in the club. And they got like the pimento dancing on it, the basil, the peppers. But it's that pepper helder like holding it all up. Jerk. Love it. <laughs> All day. For sure. Mr. Chin loved the jerk chicken. Yeah. Mr. Chin loved the breadfruit. Number one. Mr. Mr. Chin, Chin loved Jamaica. Number one. This guy here. Number one. Marcus Garvey led the Pan-African movement, and it was a black nationalist movement that encouraged people to get back in touch with their roots and learn who they are. So we're taking you here to Cafe Africa in Kingston that serves Pan-African food, and we're going to meet Stephen, who's going to teach us more about Garveyism. Yo, what's up, man? What's up, Eddie? How's it going? Nice to meet you, Stephen. Welcome to Cafe Africa, my brother. Did you build the Garvey statue? No, that statue has actually been there since 1987. Wow. As you can see, it could use a little facelift. But, um, <laughs> um, but Marcus Garvey was the first Jamaican to be declared a national hero in 1964. Mm -hmm. So that's why we say he's our first national hero, because after him, they decided, OK, let's create more national heroes. I like the idea of, of the seven national heroes. Mm -hmm. You know, I got the pamphlet. You know, when you come to Jamaica, you get the pamphlet and you read about the national yes. heroes. It's, it's a cool thing. It's on the back of every Jamaican school notebook. Yeah. It's on the wall of every Jamaican early childhood educational institution. And, of course, they're on our money. I, yeah, I, I, I wish our money was as strong as our heroes. <laughs> 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 yeah, man, just to understand more about Garveyism, because mm -hmm. a lot of times when you learn about it in America, they'll talk about Marcus Garvey as a criminal, you know, a militant, and things like that. Mm -hmm. But, like, I've always seen him as a hero. Yes. Well, to be fair, his most influential years between 1916 and 1926 were in America. Yeah. When Garvey left Jamaica in 1916, he was not the famous Garvey we know today. So he really made his name and established himself and his organization in the United States. What Garvey was saying that because of our experience as Africans coming from Africa, how we were brought here and what we suffered through, we have a duty to sort of unify our efforts in order to advance our race. So it's not enough to say you're in slavery for 200 years, now you're free. Yeah. We need a system where we're able to pool our resources, practice collective securities in order to, to give our race a lift and make it competitive and equal with others in terms of economics, politics, um, society, and so forth. In the digital age, you know, identity doesn't have borders anymore. 
and you know it's not you, you're only African in Africa right. if you're a child of Africa you're the diaspora you have to reconnect you have to get plugged back in yeah so I think it's very important to know who you are that's that's excellent and that in its in a nutshell represents Garveyism Garveyism says look know your history the yeah. history of black people going back to the first civilizations in Egypt in Ethiopia in Timbuktu we have made great contributions to civilizations yes so it is because of our experience in the West and that mental colonization yes. that Garveyism becomes necessary. With colonialism, it's a very insidious way to control someone, to take their tongue and to take their identity and take their history. Mm -hmm. If you don't know where you're from, if you don't know your family, mm -hmm. you're split up, you don't have your language, history, culture. You're a blank slate. You're a blank slate They've and they write anything right. they want uh... on you. And so it's hard to teach somebody to want that if you've never had that and yeah. that's a struggle if you look at um, Rastafarianism if you look at reggae music you guys went and you went to Charlestown you saw the Maroons mm -hmm. and so forth you see that that represents that as much as they try to take our language take mm -hmm. our religion take this take that there is something within us that kept bubbling up to come out yeah. And so you have the Maroons and so you have reggae music now urging yeah. Africans to fight for liberation and so forth and this is what makes, you know, Jamaica and really the Caribbean and Africans in general so powerful, that indomitable yeah. spirit. And my brother, that's why so many people connect to Jamaican culture, Jamaican music, Jamaican sayings, even Garveyism itself is because it's deep down in every single person. That like feeling of wanting to love yourself and know who you are. And when it springs up from a Jamaican that has been suppressed and silenced for so long, it's the most powerful. One it's love. the most powerful, One love. you know? It really is. Let's eat we'll, and we'll talk, man. Eat some, I want yeah, to taste some, some of this food. food. Yeah. What is this? This is kosheri. That's lentils, rice, pasta, sauce, and fried onions. Mmm. Ooh. It's like a spicy North African lasagna on top with that dry, chili heat that's very indicative of North African food. And then it's on top of the lentils and rice. Yeah. This is incredible. You know, pasta really comes from Asia. Mm -hmm. So even as much as we talk about Jamaica being out of many one, yeah. if you really look at African food and African culture, it's so many different cultures. Yeah. Food is one of the way that we sort of transmit culture across the world. Yeah. I love Jamaican and African food too because it comes out of an experience and it's utilitarian. Yeah. In front here here is Dongo Dongo. That's sawfish and okra. And Dongo Dongo is the origin of gumbo. Oh, so it's best eaten with fufu, which is either pounded cassava or pounded yam. This one is yam. Okay. That's why our mantra is a taste to remember, because we want you to remember where you come from. How is it? Delicious. You can really see how gumbo came from this. If I was to take this mm -hmm. and then put some hot sausage and tomato and yes, dry rice yes. in it, you can make gumbo. This is the there base it is. right there. You know, I've been reading about the history of Jamaica and the history of a lot of countries around the world that rose up out of colonialism but then there's this neo-colonialism right which is what's going on with the imf world bank mm -hmm. and the debt and i wanted to get your perspective if jamaica's actually free europe thought for a long time before they decided to give us emancipation and they thought for an even longer time after that before they decided to give us independence yeah and it's really just a smokescreen because what they've always been con uh, concerned with is controlling the economy and the production and the, the revenues that are generated by the country. We're supposed to be an independent country, but if economically you're tied to somebody else, then you're not independent. You're not independent and you're not free because it, wasn't it 20 percent of Jamaica's GDP was paid to the IMF this year for interest? Yes. Yeah. The yeah. Well is where we need to focus as a people. Absolutely. And this is why Marcus Garvey is most relevant because he didn't just talk about knowing your culture and knowing your ethnicity. Yeah. He talked about collective economic security. And I'll tell you, the cultural war, the class of civilizations is the biggest charade in the world. They have us fighting over everything else except what they're controlling us with, which is the global economy. But there are nations that have prevailed, you know, and I draw the example of what the Chinese have been able to accomplish. I'm not saying that they're, they're perfect, yeah. but in terms of understanding that they needed to create a wealth base in order to make themselves equal amongst the other world players. And that's why, you know, free market is not necessarily good for nations coming out of colonialism. You know, people criticize like a Fidel Castro, but there is a need and a time 
for a Castro, given the fact that you're a country coming out of slavery and colonization. There needs to be some insulation for a time in order to secure your own wealth creation yes. before you engage the free market. It's just like the idea of sending a kid to a private school, or you stay and you live with your parents till you're 18. When you're young, before you have your legs about you, you have to be incubated, and it right. makes time. That's right. what Castro did, that's what Mao exactly. did. Exactly. That's what a lot I of love that analogy. Did. But we need to keep pushing and we need to keep developing and creating wealth for ourselves so that we can be independent and cut that umbilical cord, whether it's the IMF, the World Bank, or the Queen. Absolutely. Get free. <laughs> something delicious I looked outside my window and there was this dude making vegetable soup I smelled this soup from the car yeah I'm on Eddie All right, there nice is. to meet you Frenchy, Frenchy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you're not actually French no I'm Jamaican English ah you lying no. but they call me no. the Frenchman you like to tell the girls you French yeah. well I can't speak French yeah. so yeah. I'm in <laughs> Yeah, you want to come yeah, yeah. the music, yeah, I'll have one order of this natural soup. Yes. I see a can here. Mm -hmm. Natural can. Oh, dumpling? Yes. I see and the pepper. dumpling. That is a yeah, pepper. I see the pepper. Yes. I see scotch it. Bonnet. Yeah. Scotch bonnet. Scotch bonnet. Pepper. Scotch bonnet. Yes. I heard the about peanut. that. I see the it. peanut. Yeah, I see you boiled the peanuts in there. Your girlfriend mm. will be pleased. Oh, yeah. No, they say the coconut water goes straight yeah. to your heart. The scotch bonnet goes straight to your balls. Yeah. <laughs> this is right. <laughs> yeah, this vegetable soup, I think the trademarks of it, you got the dumpling, you got the scotch bonnet in there, you got the corn, you got the callaloo, you got the peanuts. The hey, peanuts okra. give it a real good flip and the okra. Yo, you got a lot of kung fu. I like this. Like this. You got a lot of kung fu. Yeah, yeah, you put your foot in it. Yeah. You definitely, he put his foot in this yes. soup. Yeah. All right? That's right. That's right. right now a 17 mile post it's a three in one a very iry combination they say you get mount edge which is the bed and breakfast you got eats cafe and then the food basket which is a local farm to your table delivery service hi hey leo i'm eddie welcome nice to meet welcome you to are you me. robin to meet you. yes yeah robin. thanks for having us of course how long have you had this about three and a half years you can't beat the view the mountain no. is beautiful. I feel like the energy in the mountain, I think, is undefeated. And it's great when you have a farm and you can just have access to pick all of these mixture of vegetables, like the eggplant. Sometimes we have zucchini. And I send an email every Monday with what we have on the farm. And then Thursdays, we do doorstep delivery. Do most people in Jamaica use a service like this or they go to the country themselves? Oh, no, they love it. People are so busy now that it's hard to find the time to actually go and be able to pick your own. Yeah. So it's nice to have it just delivered to your doorstep. This is a nice eggplant. Super, extremely firm eggplant. Nice and waxy. This might be one of the best texture eggplants I've ever seen. I get really excited by good produce. Here's our farmer. Hey. You got great eggplant, my man. <laughs> we came here because we feel like Eats Cafe, this is kind of the most modern food establishment that we could find in Jamaica. Like, you have a philosophy about food. It's real, right. you know? And I think also in Jamaica, we're very proud. So we're very about brand Jamaica, eat local. A lot of people like to farm, even in their own backyard, because that's how we started our farm. My dad loves cooking, and he started just by planting a few salads and herbs, and now our mailing list is over a 1,000 people. How many terraces do you have? Well, we have a lot of sections of the farm, and it goes straight from road oh, to wow. river. <laughs> that's dope. Yeah. yeah. You got to wake up some days and just feel like you're the king of the world, like right here. This is this is pretty epic. <laughs> it is beautiful. Yeah. Oh, Did yeah. you meet my dad? No, I haven't. No, daddy. No. Eddie. Hi, I'm Eddie. <laughs> well, nice to meet you. Right, bro. Yeah, they already roasted a duck. What are you basting it with? Olive oil. But it's interesting because you got a stand-up barrel. Yeah. You know, a lot of Different. times they have the laying down barrel. Yeah. 
This is good. It gets a different smoke and the skin gets tighter. Yeah. Yeah, real Not nice. So Not many people do jerked up. Nobody does. Nobody jerk does up. jerked up. Oh, and you cooked it with the insides, the organs in there. Everything in there. Mmm. Very good flavor. And not too ducky. Mm -hmm. Very tender. It, everything's super subtle, and you taste the flavor of yeah. the duck and the smoke, ah, which I like. You got it. This is real good. Oh, lamb chops. Okay. What we have wow. is we roast this lamb yep. uh, in the same way we would do the duck. Yep. Take a piece. Yep. Wow. Nice, thin crispiness from frying it. Super tender from slow roasting it. Guys, you want to enjoy? Never feed the white people. <laughs> <laughs> They're too greedy? Too greedy. <laughs> Give them one, they take them all. That's what they did with my woman, you know. Oh, really? <laughs> Damn. So I, live, so I live up here alone. See? <laughs> I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you guys, people, don't believe me. You got to watch out for these white people. <laughs> Always. I got my don't eye on you. On my woman. I got my eye on you, CV. <laughs> chef, <laughs> chef knows. <laughs> chef knows. <laughs> I feel like the things you guys are doing at Eats Cafe in the farm that your family has done, well, you know, you're taking it into your own hands. Exactly that. We're trying to create a program, and what we're doing that eventually, we will be our own security, we'll be our own producers, we'll be our own everything. Yeah. If everybody comes and steps on the plan, and they say, well, okay, it works, and they start to follow this type of plan, when they see a tourist, He's a precious commodity. Yeah. Because Jamaicans, they're all entrepreneurs. Every little Jamaican man, he wants to have his own little shop, even if it have only two bears in it. <laughs> we, I have seen this. Yes. On the side of the road, every black. Cocaine. And yeah. they, they, it's unbelievable. Yeah. It's a country of lemonade stands. It's, it's that spirit. So this is a good plan. Yeah. This is a good plan. A small business plan. Yeah. I yeah. like it. My bad. Oh, damn. Jamaican tennis court. Got the ganja on the side. So we're here in Kingston to hang with the legendary Sean Paul. I wanted to meet someone in Jamaica who's actually made it and see if success has changed the relationship they have with their homeland. Yo, we with Sean Paul, and we're going to play King of the Hill with the homies Chris, Scott, and Jonas. Yeah. Right? But yeah, it's King of the Hill, as you say. But it's not exactly tennis. Yeah. It's first to three points. Okay, be ready. Chinese boys. You know what I mean? <laughs> Run the town. Yup. Ready? Yup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Yo, what up, bro? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, man. Yeah, I feel like I was a little timid. I got to follow through. I was one tournament from being ranked in the state of Florida. I would have been in top 140 when I was like seventh grade, but then I started smoking weed. Champs. I didn't even know it was going to be that easy. Now it's on tape. Eddie came and beat me in my game. 
Be <laughs> dynasty. No, that yeah, was fun, history. man. I think I think it's time for the Chinese food, man. Yeah, it's the rum punch in the Chinese food. I was telling Let's you. get it. Let's Dude, get it. Let's get it. Let's yep. go eat. If there's one thing you learn on this show, it's that after strenuous physical activity, you gotta drink the rum punch for the electrolytes. You gotta do it. Right? Steve, the doctor teaches us how to right. make this natural rum punch. All right, so there's a basic recipe to Jamaican rum punch, mm -hmm. which is one sour, two sweet, yeah. three of strong, and four of weak. Donuts, can you pour the other medicine? You tell me when to stop, though. I might overdo it. Pour it in a cup first. No, no, no. We don't have to do that. <laughs> All right, stop. <laughs> okay. Jonas got a heavy hand. <laughs> no. Some no. weak. A little bit? No. No, no. no. Right, right. I need less weak. I want all yeah, wolves. Right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, doctor. All right. Taste it. This for you. Cheers, man. Big up, 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 big up. Big cup. <laughs> Delicious. Very strong. Come to think of it, a country needs some weak people. <laughs> <laughs> some food yeah let's do it we order all your favorites no every country i go to i gotta try the, the chinese fast food because they always finesse it is it your grandpa that's chinese yeah, yeah your family make chinese food at the crib yeah and they would always make the ginger sauces or you know boiled boiled chicken yeah he was a doctor so good stuff you know what i mean yeah like a piece of the culture i don't speak chinese or i don't know much about you know yeah. my family that that was there that basically is about four generations yeah. deep now so well, yeah. I feel like by the time people come to Jamaica, after a generation, they become Jamaican, you know? After you've been here 15 minutes, you're like, wow, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jamaican culture is so strong, I feel like it absorbs anything that comes in here. I'm going to try this pimento steak. How is it? It's like a Christmas pepper steak. <laughs> mm. Yeah? Let me taste that pimento. It's so tender. So tender. Mm-hmm. Because they velvetize it. Yeah. They grab the steak in a cornstarch. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Ah. Yeah. So hold on. So I'll just let you know that you can't use those big words down here. Oh, yeah? Cornstarch? Oh, velvetize? That's too big. Yeah. Well, you got to put it in a new song, Sean. You have to velvetize. Cut it down. No, velvetize that's going to be that new shit. Velvetize it like stick. Yeah, I can't wait to get home and velvetize the wife, bro. <laughs> the wife's got to get velvetized. <laughs> the velvetation. Mm. I grew up in Orlando, Florida, and I was listening to all your shit. You know, I remember bumping it on the school bus. <laughs> and we would, like, when the Belly soundtrack came out, we were playing that song you had, and we were jumping across the bus, like, banging it back and forth, man. <laughs> that shit was super well, hard. Help. That's what this music is for. It's for forgetting the problems that exist in day to day and whatever, and just wilding out right now. You yeah. know what I mean? A lot of people come here thinking it's a small island, and they'll be able to shine, and people will see them. But everybody here is talented, yo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... Yeah, for kind of, you have to be on it 24-7. What would you tell young Jamaican cats that's trying to do it? Um, first of all, and I say it all the time, just don't do it for all the, the flair uh, that you see. Do it from your heart if you feel you have something to add to the art that it is. I mean, when I came into the game, I was trying to add to what the greats do before. And I can't do it like them, but I can do it my own way. Yeah. A lot of people ask me, why am I still here? And I, yeah. I find it a weird question. I grew here. These are my friends. These are people who make me who I am today. Yeah. So I have a, almost a sense of responsibility. Like, I got to build this back, too. Yeah. I never, ever thought when I make it, I'm going to leave here. I, I thought when I made it, I'm going to make sure other people see that and feel that and be inspired by that and also hopefully make it, too. That's the thing you see with a lot of Jamaicans, though. I mean, Usain Bolt still lives here. Yeah. You still live here. A lot of Jamaicans, they all come home. I mean, but uh, a lot of people not from Jamaica come here. <laughs> my grandmother, she's from England. Yeah. And she came here and she's like, I'm not leaving. Yeah. Many different cultures, many different people influenced what you see as Jamaicans today. Mm -hmm. So, you know, each one teach one. You already know. Yeah. Oh. Definitely, man. Number one. Bro. Sean Paul. Monty. Blood. <laughs> oh, don't rock my legs, right? Just sit back. 
feels very natural. It looks more natural for you than me. Base rubs! Now no! <laughs> you ask crazy though, horses can take a dump while walking. Like humans, man, you gotta sit still. I'll show you sometime, horse. We're coming here to Dr. Graham's house. He's a prominent veterinarian out in the country in Jamaica. And we're gonna check out his farm. He got peacocks, he got goats, and we're gonna get you up close and personal eye to eye with one of these goats before we simmer in some curry. Hey, how's it going? Hey, how are you doing? I'm Eddie. Oh. Nice to meet you. Patrick Graham. Nice to meet you, definitely. Thank you for Hi, having Eddie. us. My bad half. Eddie, How are you? nice to meet you. This is like you got your own little like Galapagos Island of animals out here. Yes, it's yes, it's my little world. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. Yes, thank How you. How long have you been out here? Well, I've been here about um, 12, 14 years. Yeah. Were you always a, a farmer raising animals? Well, yes, ever since I child, my parents were hardware. And then I'm, when I left school, I went to University of Windsor mm -hmm. in Canada, and then I went to Tuskegee University. Oh, wow. Where I do a doctor of veterinary medicine. Yeah. So they're a different breed than this? Yes, as you can see. Look yeah, so these are Nubians. Yes. And then this guy over here is a yeah. boar, which is originally from South Africa. Oh, wow. He got huge balls. <laughs> and then we have the Spanish goat that we're going to eat for dinner. Right. Goat is a delicious animal. Well, it is, yes. I would say it's somewhere between beef and lamb. And this, it has less fat in the muscles as well. Mm -hmm. So it's a little, a little bit more healthier. In Jamaica, we curry it mostly. Yeah. Oh, Malibu. Malibu to Malibu. All right. My name is Greg. Malibu representer. <laughs> Malibu. <laughs> My name is Greg. I take care of animals and stuff. Oh, nice, nice. Nice to meet you. So he wants to meet his dinner. He wants to meet his Yo. dinner. <laughs> Oh, this is the one? Yes. It's a small goat, and it's a good meat purpose goat. Yeah. It's not a stud breed. That's right. It's a small goat. Is the goat native to Jamaica? No. Call it, call it a Spanish goat. Do you ever slaughter the animals? Yeah, I slaughter them for Do you get sad when you kill them? Because you raise the animals and you take care of them? Yeah, yeah. I love them. Like, it makes me really hard to yeah. eat. Slash them chocha or something like that. Yeah. Well, is that like a sacrifice? Is that a sacrifice? But you have to respect it. Respect and take care yeah. of the world. A lot of people raise these animals. They're stuck in small pens. Yeah. They never really get to enjoy life at all. Yeah. These animals, you can tell, they enjoy life. That's with my boss, Dr. Graham. He, he treated the animal like him and tried to cheat himself. Mm -hmm. He tried to learn me that. So I, I kind of get what you're saying. Yeah, no, these is his last moments. Yeah. You got like five minutes, man. True. You no. see, as soon as this guy came out the knife, the goat is running, and he started screaming. That's the first time this goat made a noise. Um, he realized. You look at he realized. <laughs> Stevie, you don't need me. Get the goat. Just watch this. I, I'll say this, man. Ami tofu, ami tofu, ami tofu, ami tofu, ami tofu, ami tofu, ami tofu. This happens every time you eat, man. You gotta see this. Hello? Can I busy now? We're doing an interview. I should come back. Tell him you just killed a goat. We just killed a goat. We just killed a goat, man. And my baby mother. For your baby moms? Yeah. Yeah. We just killed a goat.
butcher here? Yeah, butcher chef. How long has your family been in Jamaica? How many generations? No, about two, three. Two, two three? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You consider yourself Jamaican or Indian or both? Jamaican, Jamaican, yeah. Jamaican. Yeah. Most people are very proud to be Jamaican. It's very much people know who they are. Right. And I think that's one of the biggest struggles in life. And I'm proud to be Jamaican. I mean, Jamaica brand is a big thing all over the world. So everywhere Jamaicans go, they have, let, they have left their mark. Yeah. That's something I'm very proud of. Oh, when I was at university, I was tops in my class. But a typical Jamaican are hard fighters, and everywhere they go, they do well. I think the best part of the show is not the food, it's meeting the people and learning things. I learn in one week what I would learn in a college course an entire year or an entire semester. The opportunity to learn and see all these things and see all these people is a real gift. It's kind of wild, man. We're like in a zoo, eating curry goat in Jamaica. Looks good. That smells good. Oh, wow. See, I was worried because... This chef was very confident. He was talking a lot of shit, and I was worried that this wouldn't be good, and I would have to lie to him, but this is delicious. No talk shit, man. Do you tell oh, us man. how go? Yeah, no, you weren't talking shit. You oh, were just okay. telling the truth. This is the most tender goat I've ever had. And goat is not an easy animal to cook because it don't have that much fat. Right. The balance of the curry is perfect. It's not too much curry. It plays with the flavor of the meat, but the meat shows the most. Oh, yes. I guess you're a great narrative. Mm. And thanks to the goat for sacrificing its life for us. That poor goat tastes real good. I think you guys are a really good ambassador for the United States. Mm. Thank you. You know, human beings are funny animals, man. We play favorites. You see... The pretty goat, that goat's gonna live all the way till it dies on its own as a stud. The smaller, not so cute goat got sacrificed for goat curry today. But one is not better than the other. And as caretakers of this planet, I think the important thing is to be mindful of how much we take. Jamaica gives the world so much. They do so much with so little. But Jamaica keeps giving and the world keeps taking. And when we look at the debt that the rest of the world holds over Jamaica's head, I have to start to ask myself if this debt hasn't already been paid for, not just in cultural wares and soft power, but actually physical labor. This current global economy we have, it doesn't exist without slave labor just a couple generations ago. And for Caribbean countries, not just Jamaica, but colonies around the world, maybe we don't give reparations, but perhaps we need to start thinking and saying that this debt has been paid for.